Ken here, the unemployed prop guy. Uh, today we're going to talk about mechanical switching and timers. Um, first off, yes, digital is great. And if I was doing this for a job, not a personal project, maybe I would use an Adreno or Pi or all that other crap that's out there. But, you know, I don't like it. I know that it's better and it's whatever. You can control every aspect of it. But I like old school, God, I keep on saying old school, <laughs> old school mechanical timers, kind of um, pinball machine, electromagnetic pinball machines before they got into solid state. Um, or what's another example, oh, automatons. I love old automatons where you have all the gears running stuff and making the signature and it's just clock making almost at its best. And... Um, also, I like the fact that I can look at this and know what's wrong with it. And uh, there's a lot wrong with it, even without looking at it. But it works. So here, let's demonstrate. As you can see, as I turn it, the lights in the back go on and off. And this is a panel for a spaceship that uh, the little film I'm making. So, And um, it's shot in black and white, so that's why they're not colored. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, let's talk about the individual pieces and we'll go from there, okay? Okay, so this is the back of the piece. Um, and um, I have it set up pretty simple diagram-wise. Um, I, I, I like color coding it, obviously, so you could chase it down easier. So I have different circuits. I have like the A channel, or just, I'll call them channels. So it's A channel. B channel, C channel, and then this number seven, which is a channel, but it doesn't, I have this one always on, so that one doesn't matter. So I have all the hots, all the red going into the bus, and then it goes to this red one and then goes down to power. And then I have the, all the negatives, here, this channel, both channels for what's called, this, this is A, uh, the top and bottom. It goes into the A channel, goes through the black, runs down, goes over here to the uh, chasing uh, device uh, switch, call it. And um, as this gets turned, gets power, it the channel goes on or off. And yeah, you see that when I actually are running the device. Um, yeah, so it's pretty simple, like I said, uh, uh, setup. And um, yeah, like I said, like, you know, I could have a little pie, little circuit board here. I could run each light individually and I could set it up and have it do cool, crazy things. And sure, whatever. But I like working with deficit. I always say deficit. Yeah. I do my best work out of not having the right stuff and having to figure out ways to overcome the fact that I don't have the right stuff. It's just it's how I work when I'm making art. That's kind of what I do. I mean... I do this for theater and film a lot too. A lot of times I go with the pies. I go with the solid state equipment because that's what they want. And the reliability is a little higher on that sometimes. And sometimes it's not. It all depends on what you do. Um, but yeah, so let's go look at the uh, mechanical switch that I have and how that works. Cool. Okay, well, here is my... Uh, mechanical chasing switch. Um, so what I got here is a Campbell soup can, uh, homage to you know Andy Warhol, um, and I have it that it can rotate with the handle. You could turn the handle, and I could put a motor on it, but I may do that down the road. But right now, I could just turn it. I'll show you that in a minute. And as you remember, I have these wires that come down. And for the different channels, so I have the red, which goes, here's the red, and it goes down to the power, the positive, and then I have the negative coming up here. Negative goes under this bus, goes to this metal wire, under the copper tape that's around the soup can. And so that makes this all negative energy. Um, and... Um, this whole uh, disc is uh, a negative energy, which closes the circuit and makes the light go on. Okay, so um, as this goes, and then so each channel 
has its own strip. When I turn it, it's on until the black tape, which is electrical tape, stops the positive energy or negative energy from closing the circuit and the light. So as it goes around, on, off, by, if it's contacting the copper tape, and I can set up the chasing pattern that I want and the speed that I want. You know, I can go f really fast or really slow, and I have actually a lot of control. Like I said, I, you could do it other ways, I'm sure, and, you know, I like this because it's funky and, um, yeah. It's art. So, so yeah, there. So that's how this one works. And uh, let's go talk about uh, timing, a mechanical timing switch I did for an actual art piece. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so here's an art piece that I did. It is kind of based off of uh, a 30s, 1940s arcade game that I saw once. And uh, it's Ask the Man in the Hat. Uh, you press the button, you ask, you ask the question, and then it's this light goes yes, no, yes, no. All this other stuff happens. You'll see. But I got a mechanical timer there that runs everything. And um, yeah, so let me demonstrate it to you. Oh, I'm supposed to ask the question. Uh, will I win the lottery? Hey, I'm going to win the lottery. Um, okay, let's take a look at the timer and then look at some of the other parts of it. Okay. Okay, let's look inside. So this is my mechanical timer for the whole piece. Um, it runs um, the timing for the motors in the main cabinet that run the motor for the face to move and the uh, yes or no question. Um what happens is when you hit the switch, um, it's, it gives power to the motor. This wood disc rotates, and right now the knife is in this little notch. And because it's in the notch, the switch is open. So when it moves past this point right there, it closes the switch, which runs the motor, because it's getting power to the motor, and also runs everything, all the motors, up in the main cabinet. So let's take a look. And there you go. As you can see, it fall the knife switch falls into the notch and it turns off all the power not only to the motor but to everything above there. What's a neat thing to show you if if I take the switch, now it's running everything above there, but it is not running the motor because the only way the motor will run, the only way the motor will run is if I hit this switch. So that's a neat little function thing. Well, let's look at the back and check it out. Okay, here is the inside back of the piece. Uh, down here is the timer, which I just showed you. And I press the button, It uh, the switch closes, power comes up through this into this motor. This motor starts running for that 30 seconds, let's say. Uh, during that 30 seconds, this little, call it a gear, uh, turns around and they have notches in it. And as the notches go, um, push in, they push, either push down this button or let it or open the switch. Closes the switch, opens the switch. When it closes the switch, it turns on that light. When it opens, it turns on that. So that's where the randomness is for the yes or no questions. Um, let's take a look at that. Wow, close up, those are really ugly solders. Well, whatever. It was, I made this piece a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, so there's a mechanical motor running something that's actually running. I don't know if you would, this is kind of a timer, it's kind of a switcher uh, chasing lights, 
yeah, sure, going back and forth. And I just like it. I mean, yes, I could have done it electronically and blah, 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 but I, I like the mechanicalness of it because this is, like I said, based off an old arcade game. And um, all those old arcade games are electromagnetic type games. And, you know, it, it's just... I, I, I hate to keep... I keep using the word old school way too much lately, but um, I need to actually wrap these the way I do. I got zip ties on here and, you know, and not as pretty as what I like, whatever. Um, so yeah, I hope you understand what I did and you enjoyed my explanation. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. Okay. Bye.